right down to the wire. That's why the most trusted America's election headquarters. And we continue with our Hannity exclusive tonight, a first look at the Obama tapes that the late Andrew Breitbart promised to release at CPAC this year. Rejoining me from Breitbart.com, Joel Pollack and Ben Shapiro. All right, let's go back to Professor Ogletree. Now, this is, what, 2011, and this is him bragging. I don't care if they see it now, because is he referring to having hidden them leading up to the 2008 election? Let's roll that tape. Now, what makes this so interesting when you think about it, uh, it it's, uh, of course, we hear this throughout the 2008 campaign, so no, <laughs> the, 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 I don't care if they find it now, but uh, right? But, but, he just told you so he should, so uh, this is important. Explain, uh, Joel, we'll go to you. Explain how the media selectively edited this, and you guys were, oh, you're saying you're releasing the whole thing. You're showing a hug that the media didn't show. You're showing Ogletree is saying, hey, wait a minute. We didn't want you to see this. Ha ha, I don't care if you get it now. Explain the media aspect of this. Well, the background is there have been countless biographies and journalistic articles and accounts of Obama's time at Harvard Law School. And this speech that he gave about Derrick Bell is mentioned and referenced in many of them, but nobody bothered, either through laziness or active suppression, to find out what Obama said and what his connection was with Derrick Bell and to find out more about who Derrick Bell is and what he believed. In fact, it's amazing. If you look at all the articles, it's just unbelievable. And then for Ogletree to actually come back and say, hey, uh, we kept this hidden during 2008. Now, PBS said, well, we aired some of it at yeah, the time. Yeah, They didn't that. give you the audio. They didn't give you the end. When, it, it's, it's a slice and dice six ways to Sunday operation <laughs> where they try to shift your eyes away from this relationship that Obama had with Bell and the admiration and endorsement that Obama gives to Bell. Yeah, basically, Sean, the way that it worked on PBS was that PBS played the clips of, of him hugging Bell, but they blacked out the audio. So they had voices over for the audio, so you have no idea of, that Obama is actually saying, open your heart, open your mind, and all this kind of stuff. Um, apparently, you know, now BuzzFeed this morning uh, released the audio, but then it was clipped at the end. So you actually didn't have the audio and the hug in the same clip, which just goes to show how the, the lengths that they will go, even when they're releasing a story about President Obama that makes him look bad, the lengths that the media will go in order to prevent the whole kind of imagistic truth. And images are so much more powerful than words. When you see him hugging Derek Bell and you hear the words, that's when you get the full let story. Me, not when you get half, and not when you get the other half. Let, let, let me go into this a little more deeply, because Ogletree saying oh, what, what we heard him say here, I don't care if they find it now, um, but so the media is releasing only selective portions of this, including BuzzFeed. They don't show the hug. They don't show Ogletree. They don't give the context of who Professor Derek Bell is here. And now all of a sudden BuzzFeed releases it. Breitbart says it's coming out. You guys announce it's going to come out on the show today. All of a sudden now everyone's starting to show, but only selective portions. But what, explain exactly what they're missing and why, because in, especially in light of all the Republicans being vetted fully, what does it mean that this didn't come out in 2008, and what else are we to expect here? What this means is that there's a well-known history of associations between Barack Obama and radical figures, and the media at each stage has done whatever it can to suppress it. Either they don't report Reverend Wright's words, or they dismiss the Black Panther case. And in this case, they try to say, well, Bell was for racial diversity on campus. They always try to shift it away from President Barack Obama. We don't want to relitigate the 2008 election. That's not what Andrew wanted. Andrew wanted to go out there and say, look, we're going to do what the mainstream media has never done. We're going to vet Barack Obama. And the fact that everyone is suddenly running around looking for videotapes <laughs> is exactly what Andrew wanted. This was his model of citizen journalism. And it's yeah. only when you put that out there and say, we're going to come after you, so that the me, mainstream media journalists get off their chairs and say, we've got to find a way to spin this before somebody else finds it. Let me see if I have So it, this wouldn't be a smoking gun, but it would do two things. It would be another brick in the foundation that I think proves a point I tried to make uh, in 2007 and 8 that this candidate is far more radical, now president, as evidenced by, by the way he's governed, that he's far more radical than he let on, number one. Number two, the media never did its job. The media, yeah. the, if George Stephanopoulos was on my radio show the day before he asked the one question about Bill Ayers, he started his campaign in his house, gave speeches, sat on boards with him. So the real issue here is, is the media's culpability They'll look into every nuance of every Republican, every word that Rick Santorum, Newt Gingrich, and Mitt Romney have ever said, but they won't do this to Obama. 
Is well, that, every tape that they find has been just concealed, right? I mean, you, you mentioned the Khalidi tape, but I mean, earlier this week, for example, we released a poster showing Barack Obama's name on, on, a, on a poster for a play called The Love Song with Saul Alinsky. He was supposed to speak on a panel about it. Now, we know there's somebody who has a tape of the actual play. She said she's not going to release it to protect Obama. This is how things have been working. And I think the one smoking gun here, the, the, the only smoking gun here, there are two smoking guns, actually. First smoking gun is obviously people are covering things up. Period. End of story. Second smoking gun here is Obama media. is endorsing the words. Yeah, the media and, and academia, by the way, because Ogles reads an academic. And by the way, you notice what he says there. He says, we hid this. Not I hid this. We hid this. Charles Ogletree was a debate coach for President Obama. So that's worth further investigation. The second smoking gun here is the ideological question, which is Obama actually saying, open your hearts, open your minds to the words of Professor Derek Bell. That means it's now time for us to investigate, and that's what we'll be doing, the words and the actions of Professor Derek Bell and how they relate to President Obama's ideology. Right. And by the way, for the record, we did call Professor Ogletree uh, to get reaction to his comments, but I guess when you put it together, we've got ACORN, we've got Alinsky, we've got Community Organization, we've got Ayers, we've got Dorn, we've got Wright, we've got Flager, and we've got very few questions, and on top of that, we also have very little information about his time at both Harvard and Columbia and a thesis. And I, is the question here is, I think, the challenge for the media. And maybe, maybe I was right in 2008 in journalism or old journalism is dead, and maybe this is the rise of new journalism. Uh, is there a lot more to expect from you guys? Final question. Oh, yeah. We've got plenty more, and there will be a lot of it released next week. All right, guys. We'll be, uh, we'll be carrying it right here. Thank you so much for being with us. And Professor Ogletree refused our invitation to uh, respond. Coming up, we're going to respond to this. We're going to have a debate. We have Michelle Malkin, Juan Williams. They are here with reaction to these tapes. And then President Obama ignores a reporter's attempt to ask about a super PAC donation from Bill Maher. But he's not the only one avoiding questions. We have some hilarious footage. You don't want to miss this. Democratic lawmakers asked about Bill Maher and whether or not the president's PAC should return the money. Wait till you see them, well, not react. Straight ahead.